Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 595 and the topic today is why men are screwed. This one's going to go deep. So I invite you to bear with me. Before I get into that, let me start with introducing myself and tell you more about what I'm about. If that makes sense. My, <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. So today's episode is number 595, which means I'll be hitting number 600 next week. It still amazes me. But the topic today has been really on my mind for the last few days, and it's basically why men are screwed. I'm going to touch on a few things, and part of it was inspired because of the new and all the... Um, what's we're looking for? Popularity, maybe, of the new Gillette commercial, which is, I said, was a great commercial, but it's too late. Not too late. It was... It was a long time coming for someone to talk about this. So I'm going to talk, I've talked about this before and I'm going to talk about it again. I did some talks way early in my Facebook Live career about this, but I want to talk about it again because it's important for me. Um, and it's important because it's time we have this conversation. Some data points I want to throw out on the, on the table at the beginning of this is that, um, well, I'll put it this way. If you're not aware, the suicide rate for men is three to five times higher than it is for women. Um, one, because men are going at a blaze of glory, I'm sure, but two, because men don't have tools, and I'll get to that in a minute, I'm jumping ahead. Secondly, um, and there's another part of it too, is the EPA, the American Psychology Association, Psychological Association, I think it is, reports that um, back in the 60s, there was an update to the policies that talks about how to deal with women. And then in the 70s or 80s, they did a thing about how to deal with the LGBT community. But there's never been a how to deal with men. There's a big gap in the psychological industry for how to deal with men's issues and also how to deal with men and their issues, because that's the part I want to talk about. So, Lisa, I got your glass of wine. <laughs> nice to have you with me. Yes, you got your glass of wine ready. No, I'm just, I'm just laying the framework, so you're right on time. Thanks for being with me. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was on Facebook first, and I'll tell you about that at the end, about how you can watch the replays and such. Facebook Live is where I start. So there's lots of data points out there about how men haven't been, um, I don't want to say given the tools, but haven't had the opportunity or haven't been received or haven't been guided in, in vulnerability. And this is where I want to start from. We men aren't built naturally to ask for help. You may have realized that in your relationships where men didn't ask for directions, but it goes way deeper than that. And part of it is because we have to do things ourselves. There's part of this innate drive within men that we need to accomplish it. You know, teamwork is not an easy thing for us. We have to achieve to be the best because the drive in us is to be the first to achieve whatever it is, which means we tend to do things by ourselves, including dealing with upsets. And there's a whole conversation, which I'm not gonna to do today, I don't think so anyway, about the differences between men and women, about emotions, and I mean how men and women relate to emotions differently, because different emotions mean different things to each gender. That's another conversation. I, I, I talked about this before when I was at an Alison Armstrong event. She mentioned some of this, and it really broke things apart for me, or I should say, unpacked things for me to see. But more than that, the rule book, I should say the unwritten rule book for men is really set up to be um, disabling to anything other than perfection. That men have to be perfect, they have to be right, they have to get things done. The focus for men is that we're focused on, on the destination, not on the journey. Women are generally more facile and skilled with experiencing the journey and experiencing the flow and the flavors and everything along that way. That's the feminine. And I'm, and I'm gonna say this now, because when we talk about toxic masculinity, there's also toxic femininity that's been showing up as well. So toxic on both sides. But toxic masculinity is about men. And masculinity generally aligns with the male. Same as feminine usually aligns with the female. Not always, but generally. So I'm going to speak in terms of right now in this conversation, in this context, I'm framing it, is overlaying masculine with male, and fe whichever side of the screen I was doing that on, and, fe and feminine with female. So toxic masculinity has become a big topic because of the Me Too and Time's Up conversations. 
which is why I put the hashtags in the title. But it didn't just start, and this is the this is one of the problems. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this in two different ways. One of them is that we've had a societal structure in place that put men at the front. Patriarchal society has been built for men to lead and be in charge and men to be perfect. The thing about it is those that lead rarely self-reflect. Those that created this culture, this society, never looked at themselves as flawed because if they did, they would never have been about how to build a society. So this conversation, this piece about how men are always in charge isn't, isn't, isn't about, um, like, look how great they are. It's about they're not looking at themselves. One of the challenges we have in this culture is that men at the top of their game, of their roles, 90% of them, never reflect on what they're going through, what they're doing, how they're dealing with the world, how they're interacting, how they're screwing up, how, whatever that's, that is. And so there's this um, deep, dark secret that's going on. And this secret is that men don't know how to deal with themselves. And I mean this in the sense that men don't know how to handle breakdowns. Men don't know, I'm talking about their own breakdowns. They're not very good at helping, helping women, for sure, but they're certainly not even skillful by helping their own. It's like, man up, tough it out. If you ever saw, if there's a movie out, which I have yet to see, my, my um, fate on that one is, is The Mask We Wear, which talks about this a lot as well. And, and there were some points in the Gillette commercial that spoke to that. Because it talks about bullying, they talked about the egotistical man up, suck it up, you know, be a man, you know, don't be a, don't be a wimp. I went through that as a kid. However, one of the, and I can say this weirdly, one of the benefits I had when I was a kid is I got bullied. And that changed the course of my life in a good way, and I'll get to that in a minute. So the challenge for most men is that they don't have any tools, skills, or any um, resources to deal with stuff when it comes up. Because for most men, they're either numb to it or oblivious to it because they're focused on the destination. It's like you, if you went, <laughs> here's another example to use an example. When, like ladies, if, you got, if you're in a relationship with a man, if he's watching television, he can't hear a word you're saying because we're single focus. One of the skill sets of masculine is laser focus on one thing. It can work for us and against us. And the challenge is for most men is that we're focused on the destination at, at the cost of everything else which for women can really challenge in relationships. And so the way we are wired as men, generally speaking, again, generality is masculine with men, feminine with, with, with women, as a, ten, as a framework for this conversation. For so many men, the idea of having weakness, frailty, vulnerability, opening up to trauma, any of these different things are outside the frame of our abilities, references, and skills. And it's a frustrating place to play. And I know many men who are, I'm split into two groups. There are many men I know who have not done anything about their own position in the world and don't show up. They just tough it out and they act like, I'm fine, I'm fine, everything's good, which is not true. But they carry that presentation because it's all about keeping it together. I also know a lot of men, thankfully, especially in the work I've been doing for the last, well, over 20 years, that are waking up, that are becoming clear that it's okay to be vulnerable, that are becoming aware that it's okay to show weakness when it's real. To play weak is a different story. And there are men who do that as well. The challenge I'm talking about and what I think from where men are screwed is because men haven't had the support structures in place for themselves, by themselves, to actually have results. And for me, the frustration, the challenge is how to communicate with that. As I said, I've been around this, well, actually I've been around this personal growth work for over 35 years now. Jeez, yeah, over the, since, not, since not 84, that's 35 years. No. Yes. <laughs> Just get my decades right. It wasn't 45, 35 years. Thank you. I was going, not that old. So I've been in the personal growth industry in seminars and workshops since the mid-80s. And that, thankfully, was because the work, so let me back up and put some place in, piece in place. Being bullied was a gift, as much as it was a curse. I hated it. I was so resentful. Yet it opened up space for me that later in life that transformed my life in a powerful ways. So I'm grateful for that lesson. Not saying that everyone should go through bullying, but for me, the journey was one where I didn't have tools then to deal with it. And so I carried around this wound inside until my 20s. And bullying was in the early part of my teens. So it was a good 10-year span where I didn't get to deal with it. I did do one 
counterattack to one of the boys that was bullying me, which felt very satisfying, but it wasn't resolving for me. So when I was later on, thankfully, lived in a few countries, came to the United States, and found my way into the first seminar for totally the wrong reasons, thankfully. In that seminar, I discovered something, which is that the wound I was carrying wasn't permanent. I noticed the wound I was carrying not only wasn't permanent, it wasn't unique. And those two pieces were like cracking open a rock and seeing, seeing the crystals inside. I got to see myself in a whole different way because I started realizing that who I was wasn't this isolated individual, but I was actually around people who understood me, could see me, and actually saw through my facade. And truth be told, being, being bullied at school, my facade wasn't that strong in the first place. <laughs> But what happened was there was, a, there was a, a connection and with men, that's the thing about this, which was really surprising. Now, let me just back up a second. The reason why that seminar was not what I expected, the way I got invited to the seminar, which is not the marketing for the seminar, just a friend of mine said, yes, wounds aren't permanent. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Nice to see you, my broadcast. Nice to have you. Yes, that, the wounds are not permanent. I was invited to the seminar back in, this is back in the mid 80s. I was working in computer programming back then, my other, one of my other careers. And a friend of mine who had been to the set was at the seminar was to, was so exhausted the next morning. I'm like, "Where you been? Partying all night?" Because I didn't know. He said, "No, no, I was at the seminar." And I'm like, and I said, literally said to him, "What is a seminar?" I had no idea. And he said, "Well, basically, it was a chance where he could go to learn some new new tools and information. He met some cool people, and there's some cute women." And I said, "Where do I sign?" That was literally how it started. And I've been on this journey for 35 years. And if I hadn't had that intro, I may never have started. I'm so grateful for everything that happened. I'm, I'm really clear looking back how many gifts came towards me that way. So that's, that's just the trope transparency what happened. So in that seminar, what I didn't expect was to find, to find um, community and brotherhood with the other men. It was a, and it wasn't the way that I'm doing it now, but it was a starting point. It was chance to see other men in the room as, well, for a start, the first time I ever hugged a man was in that seminar. I started seeing that it was okay not to be aloof and standoffish that people thought I was because I was scared shitless. I didn't have tools back then. But what's happened since then is the journey I've been on, and I'll get to that more in a minute because I wanna get back to, it's like divergent courses. Because for many men, that's not been part of their awareness, not been part of their curriculum, not been part of their lessons. And unfortunately, there are many men who are going through life bottling up all their upsets. That's why a lot of men will deal with midlife crises. That's why a lot of men also have challenges with physical health. I, I strongly believe, and if you're doing, if you're doing conscious work, you, you may believe this too, a lot of our illnesses and ailments are triggered by mental and emotional disorders or dysfunction, where we get out of alignment with our uh, minds or our hearts or our feelings, and it ex expresses itself through a physical upset. Uh, our, being, our body starts to suffer. So there are prices men are paying for not having support, that's why, men are, that's why men are screwed, in the sense, I want to say it that way. I've got more to talk about this in another talk, but this is the, the, the line of thinking that's coming through now. Every person, but I don't want to speak to the men in this particular talk, but every, every man can learn how to be better at living life if he was willing to take a look at himself with support. It was one of the biggest gifts I received, and it's one of the biggest I've shared with other men in the process, and women as well. <clears throat> excuse me, in my coaching and speaking with women in particular, I, to be honest, I do it because they're more receptive. As a selfish act, supporting women works for me because it's a lot less work than working with men. Because men are less, as I know, receptive to change, transformation, and learning. Women are way more comfortable with that, which is why I love working with them. That's why I love coaching women, because they listen. <laughs> I mean, it's totally why I do it. I mean, it's not, it's not the only reason why I do it, because I'm dedicated to the, fem the feminine. That's why my message is I'm a, divine I'm, a pa I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, because I support and love women in the feminine. It's what will change this world. That's a whole bigger conversation. But in this particular context, I know that for us men, it's more resistant for change. We're more resistant to growing. We're more resistant to learning ways to be more um, accessible, vulnerable, feeling, um, sensitive. Those are not words that men take comfortably. Most men are like, no, 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 I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm impermeable, I can handle everything. Not worth the pain. The price is too high now for most men, but a lot of men are stuck in that. And if you look at some of the older men in leadership, they're very atrophied in that. They're actually so stuck in their ways that I'm amazed they're still alive. 
that their bodies haven't given up on them because of all the emotional and mental shutting down. Because I guess for many of them, they're so ignorant of that, they don't feel it. And that's the thing. There are men that are caught in the middle. As I mentioned said at the beginning, that the suicide rate for men is, five to th- is three to five times more than it is for women. And I think largely because men are becoming awake from their um, bulletproof immune self, and they don't know how to deal with it. And when they don't have tools, they have, a, they have a basically a downward spiral, which takes them into a place of depression, and they want to choose out. I strongly believe also that a lot of the opioid crisis, a lot of the um, PTSD challenges too, a lot of things men deal with is because they don't have the tools to deal with this stuff. So they, they have, unfortunately, reactions to or resources to go to that aren't supporting them. And I don't want to get down the PT, PTSD thing, that's not my area's skill, but I'm sure for some men, it'd be a lot easier to deal with if they had the ability to deal with their emotional expression and healing from a supportive place. And most men don't get that. Most men don't know about it. You know, I found out about the seminar, thankfully, back in the 80s, and if I hadn't done that, I probably would have never found out. Well, I'm sure I'm well. I take it back. I'm sure uh, knowing how spirit works in my life, I would have found it another way if I hadn't done that one. But I'm grateful that I did learn when I did because it changed the course of my life and put me into the deeper work. And in fact, since 2007, which has been the last 12 years, I've been very much involved in the masculine and feminine conversation, which has been adding to my school skill set, but also showing me how men can really be. You know, a truly authentic masculine man. And I saw a friend of mine posting about this yesterday about um, where, where are all the men that are sen- who are sensitive, strong, compassionate, brave, caring, all these like, blending of the, of the qualities. There aren't enough of us, apparently. Thankfully, there are more of us waking up, and I'm grateful that I've spent the last 11, 12 years in this work, and I've got friends of mine who lead the men's work in this, work, in this area, which I'm grateful for that too, because it's needed. So many men have yet to glimpse the possibility of how to be an authentic, heart-centered, masculine man. The machismo of the old paradigm is being cracked and chiseled away slowly but surely. And the Gillette commercial was a nudge in that direction. And for the men who were triggered, this is the thing. I said when I saw it in a post about it, the Gillette commercial was great, but it's a bit late. However, a lot of men are rejecting it and are upset about it because it's pushing on their buttons. A lot of men, I believe, they may say other things in their comments and responses, but I firmly believe that for a lot of men, they're actually scared of what they saw. That whole um, story, because it was a bunch of different vignettes in the in the Gillette commercial, was so for me um, resonant. But for other men, I think for a lot of them, it's just like no, 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 thank you, no, thank you, and, they, and they'll they won't say no, no, thank you. They'll say, oh, it's wrong, it's bad, it's too late, it's crappy, it's all about selling my Gillette. And so I'm watching the men react to this, and I'm seeing through the bullshit because <laughs> I feel it is. Yes, the commercial could be better. Yes, it could be. I mean, like oil, like um, is it Oil of Olay? I think was doing a lot of work, work. I think it was Oil of Olay. It was doing all these commercials for women. No, it was Dove. Dove was doing these commercials that supported women with body types and everything else which was a wonderful campaign and they didn't do any marketing of their product in the commercials. It was framed by having the Dove logo on it. But what Gillette didn't do was the same thing exactly. They still put the shaving pieces in the puzzle. So maybe I would fault them for that in the commercial. But the truth is what Gillette could do is take a page out of Dove's book and do a commercial series or even video series that aren't commercials that talk to men about being healthier, authentic, loving, vulnerable men rather than pitching their products all the time. Because that's the weakness of the commercial for me. But the men who are judging that commercial as bad, I strongly suspect, are afraid of seeing what's being shown to them. This is a bigger conversation I'm going to do here. This is, this is planting some seeds. And I want to, I'm going to talk more about this, I think, in the next few days. Because there's more to talk about how we can grow and unfold and be better men in the world. And it's not just because we can help the women because yes we well, definitely can do that by being of service being a support and being honorable respectable respectful men with women because that's another part of the conversation we'll, which i'll get to but also we can be better men to each other i think that's it for now there's more coming i know but it's not fresh it's not ready yet but this is a starting point of the conversation so this will be the next few broadcasts i believe um we'll see so I hope you've got some value from this and give you some food for thought. If you have anybody you know should watch this, please share it with them. Um, and if you want any help in this area, please reach out to me. I can direct some people. I've got some great books I recommend, not just my own book, 
which is a book for everybody, but I I recommend a couple of authors that I think are great authors in the area of masculine and men supportive um, ideas and suggestions. I think that's about it. So, oh yeah, I need to hear replays. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before and you're wondering why, if you're watching this on YouTube, that I'm talking about Facebook Live, that's where it starts. So my daily talks are at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live on my personal page, which if you want to know the link, it is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I then post the replays onto my business page on Facebook, onto YouTube channel, and onto my podcast. So I'll give you those re links as well. So on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author is my business page, and you can watch all my replays there. I also put them onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. All my social media is my name, by the way. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. We can find all of these broadcasts listed in YouTube viewable format. You can watch them all there. Um, and then they're also on my um, podcast on iTunes, which is also called Messages for the Masculine. By the way, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please subscribe to my podcast. And you can download the audio versions of my podcast. So with that, I appreciate you being here. Um, this is part one, I think. There's more coming, you can feel it. But this is just priming the pump and starting some ideas. So I hope this has been of value to you and say, if there's any questions, thoughts, please reach out to me. And, um, and also put them in the comments in below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this is the beginning of a conversation that we need to have. It's time for men to really own up to, step into and remember their hearts. And this is my, throwing my hat in the ring to help share some ideas. So I appreciate you being with me and appreciate you watching. Hope you'll be with me tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time as usual. And uh, with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.